Welcome to Live Doth, your online Doth Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf Yemi, which is Yevamayis Daf Yudches. We are holding eight lines from the top of the Amit. We'll continue yesterday's sugya, the sugya of Zika, being bound to Yibam. Do we reckon with that? Would we consider that as though the Yavam has initiated his relationship with the Yivama? So Yivama is awaiting Yibam. Yavam hadn't really done anything. But should we already consider her like engaged to him, or perhaps even married? Ravuna, the name of Rav, tells us absolutely not. Ain Zika. We don't reckon with Zika element. So the Shemeris Yavam, the Yavam who's awaiting Yibam, who passes away, the Yavam can go ahead and marry her mother, her relative. She was never considered to be as though she was his wife. Whereas the Yehuda tells us, Zika. in this very case, Shemeris Yavam Shemesa, the Yavam may not marry her relative. We consider it as though the Yavama was already somewhat connected to him, at least engaged to him. Because in reality, Yavam isn't really a new initiation, isn't really a new relationship. It's just picking up from where the departed brother left off. He's sort of taking over his family. So according to Rabbi Yehuda, Yesh Zika, we reckon with Zika. Being bound, being obligated, to mitzvah sivam is considered as though that relationship has already been initiated to the extent that even after she passes away, the yavam, the surviving brother, may, long, may not even marry her relative, such as her mother. Says the Gemara, we're going to have a kash on, on this concept of zika. Mosev rav huna bar Our Mishnah. Also about Mama Rames. Reuben passed away. His wife Rachel was now the Yavama awaiting Yibam, a Shemeris Yavam to, to Shimon. So Reuben and Shimon saw each other around at the same time. They were Be'olamai. Shimon was the potential Yavam. He did Mamar, which is sort of a pseudo Yibam. It's not really a proper Yibam, sort of a Kedushin, which we consider like a, a Durabonon, a Kedushin Durabonon by Yavama. He was some sort, of, some sort of connection he did. Umez. And then Shimon passes away leaving behind Levi, the newly arrived brother, who never saw Reuven. Reuven and Levi were they never experienced each other, never saw each other. Now, Shimon had his own wife. He had Leah. So what happens to Leah? vis vis Levi. Levi, the newly arrived brother, may not be Miyabim Rachel, who was Shimon's um, who was Reuven's wife, because Levi never saw Reuven. It's an erva. Now, if Shimon would have actually been meyabim Rachel after Reuven's passing, then Rachel is off the table for Leah, and her tzara as well. She spills over to the tzara. So Leah, the other wife of Shimon, is also also to Levi, because it's a tzara's, eishas, ochav, shloi, But in this case, he never really was meyabim Rachel. He only did mamar. He made a sort of slight connection. Umeis and then Shimon passes away. Shnei Chaletzis Levi said. This mission tells us that Levi, uh, Levi does chalitza to, to Leah. No yibam because she's somewhat affected by this mamar that her husband did to to Rachel. But she's not completely affected because Shimon didn't really do proper yibam to Rachel. So perhaps she's not really affected by Rachel. She's just an ordinary yibama who should go. To Levi, for, to Levi for Yibam. No, we do some sort of in between compromise chalitza with that Yibam. It shouldn't appear, perhaps, like you're doing uh, Yibam on a Tzaras Arab. So, since Mamras is a Durabonadic type of connection, we treat it as such, we uh, do chalitza with that Yibam. So, that's the mission that we learned yesterday. Let's make a diak. Ta'am adabad ba Mamar. This concern only applies when Shim did Mamar to Rachel. Reuven's former wife. So now Leah is somewhat affected by the ever that arrived on the scene. If Shimon would not have done Mamar to Rachel, then Leah, who is Shimon's wife, is unaffected by Rachel. When Shimon passes away, Levi can do the Yibam on Leah, Shimon's wife. Because Shimon and Levi saw each other. That's a proper evil. 
And Leah is unaffected by Rachel, who never entered her family. But if you hold of Zika, being bound to Yibam, creates that connection. Even if there's no mamar between Shimon and Rachel, even if there's no Yibam, Zika itself is considered sufficient. A sufficient connection, a sufficient initiation of that relationship. In which case, we view it as though Rachel did arrive, did enter Shimon's family somewhat, and affected Leah as well. So to Levi, everybody's Aser. Rachel is certainly Aser. Because she's a former wife of his brother Reuben, who he never saw. And since she was in the same family as Leah, how was she in the same family? Because of Zika. Zika brings her into the family. So Leah is now the Tzara of this Erva. So even without Mamar, we have that connection. Why does the Mishnah apply it only to a case of Mamar? This is a Kasha on Rabbi Yehuda, who holds up Zika. Amar Rav, I'll answer the kash. Who I didn't, I forgot to lay by Mamar. The same concept would apply even without Mamar. Zika is sufficient to make that connection. Even without Mamar, Shnia Mechlet, Chalza, Leah would only go through Chalitza without Yibum. Yibum will be Yabma, but Yibum wouldn't apply. Vadatani Mamar, why then does the Mishnah mention anything about Mamar? La Fukim Be Shamai, we're going to undo. The Amri, Mamar, Koine Kinyan Gam. As opposed to Beishama, you hold that Mamar is a proper Kinyan. In which case, if Sh- Shimon does Mamar to Rachel, Ruben's former wife, it's as though he really married her. We consider it a proper, kin- a proper acquisition, and she really entered the family completely, in which case, to Levi. They would, be, they would both be us. And Shimon passes away. Not, not only is Rachel lost to Leah, but even Leah because she was together in the same household. Because Mamar creates that proper ba- bond. Kamashmon, the mission is coming to undo that and say, no, no. Even with Mamar, it's not really a complete connection. We don't treat it as though Rachel was really married to Shimon, in which case she affects Leah. It's some sort of slight connection. We do a compromise. Leah goes through Chalitza with that even. You know, Raya, one way, of the, one way or the other from our Mishnah, pertains to the question of Zika. Esvi Abaya comes Abaya, and he asks Kasha on Rabba, basically asking on Rabbi Yudah, on the concept of Zika. The Mishnah says like this, Shnei Achen Ba'ilam Echad. If you have two brothers, it sounds like a surprise. You have two brothers, Boy and Mechad saw each other, right? Lived at the same time. Reuben and Shimon. But Meis Echad man believes that Reuben passes away without children. The Amad Asheni Hazer, his brother Shimon, was about to do Mamar. The Amad Asheni Hazer lances Mamar beivimte. He wanted to do Mamar. On Rachel, Reuben's uh, widow, he didn't get around to it. His big losses by Mamar. He didn't get a chance to do Mamar until Mazel Tov, a new brother on the scene. Suddenly Levi arrives. Levi is born. So Reuben and Shimon saw each other. Reuben was married to Rachel. Shimon to Leah. Shimon passes away. Reuben passes away. Leaving behind Rachel. Shimon was going to do Mamar. He didn't get, a, he didn't get around to it. He passes away. He was about to do Mamar. Levi was born, and then Shimon passes away. So now we have Rachel, who was Reuben's former wife. And we have Leah, Shimon's wife. Now, pertaining to Levi, the newly arrived brother, Rachel is off limits because she was married to Reuben, who he never saw. What about Leah, who was Shimon's wife? There's no problem with Levi being Miyabim Leah, because Shimon and Levi saw each other. She's a proper Yavam. 
says the Brisa. So in this case, Harishoina, the first Isha meaning Rachel, Yaitza Mishum Eshes Achiv Shloi Hayu Beilam. Right? She's exempt from Yivam because to Levi she's Eshes Achiv Shloi Hayu Beilam. Right? Ushnia, the other wife, meaning Leah, Shimon's wife, who Levi saw. Right? They lived together. Shimon and Levi were around at the same time. She's a proper Yivam. Oy Chaylatzes. Oy Misya Bemis. So then you do whatever you want. Chalitz or Yivam. That's the price. Here comes the kasha. <laughs> Apparently, we do not reckon with this zika factor. The Amrish Yish zika. If you're going to apply zika, you're running into a problem. Havilot Soras Eishes Ochev Shelo Yehoya Boi Lama Be Zika. Leia to Levi is also off limits. Why? Because remember, when Reuben passed away, Shimon was about to do him. He was the potential yavam. There was Zika going on between him and, and Rachel. If Zika is considered like marriage, if Zika is considered like Arusa, so in effect Rachel was absorbed into Shimon's family, somewhat. And she affects everybody in that household, including Leah. Leah is considered a tzara, fellow wife of this Rachel, who to Levi is an Arab. So it's a kasha. How could, how could you view the hold of Zika? The Brisa clearly indicates otherwise. Answers the Gemara, Hamani, Rabbi Meir. You're right. This Shaila, Yesik, Einzik, is Machlek is Tanaim, as we mentioned yesterday. And Rabbi Yehuda Paskin, like the Tana who holds Yesika. This Brisa is following Rabbi Meir. Hamani, Rabbi Meir, Damar Einzik. He doesn't hold of Zika. Umi, Svirle, the Rabbi Meir, Einzik. Is that so? The Rabbi Meir does not hold of Zika, but Tanaim. We have a Kasha from another mission. Where it would seem that we do hold of Zika. Arbo Acham. Now we have four brothers Reuben, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda. Reuben and Shimon are married to two sisters. Reuben is married to Rachel. Shimon to Levi, that's legal, right? Shnai Mehen, Nusum Shtechayis. Two of the four brothers are married to two sisters. So Reuben to Rachel, Shimon to Levi. Humeis, Suhanusuin Ha'achayis. Reuben and Shimon. Pass away. So the surviving brothers are Levi and Yehuda, who are potential uh, Yivamin, they want to do Yibam. Now they certainly can't be Miyabim both sisters, because once you Miyabim one, you may not marry your wife's sister. So technically, each one should be is allowed to be Miyabim one of the sisters. Right? That's a you would suggest that Levi marries Rachel and Yehuda is Miyabim Leah. No. Hara'ilu chalitzis lo'i misiyabimis. Only chalitza applies not yibam. Gemara is assuming because of the zika concept. Rachel and Leah are both bound. They're both awaiting yibam to either Levi or Yehuda. So for instance, Levi. Let's take Levi for an example. He has two potential yibamis awaiting his yibam. Two sisters, Rachel and Leah. Due to the Zika concept, where a Yavama awaiting Yibam is considered already connected to you, so it's as though Rachel is already connected to Levi. In which case, he can't marry, um, can't marry Leah. It's like his wife's sister. Likewise, it's as though Leah is connected to him, and his wife and Rachel is like his wife's sister. That's what we're assuming now. That's the Pshat in the Mishnah. We don't allow Yibam only Chalitz. Haraylu Chalitz Levi Siyabimis. That's because of Zika. But you're telling me that Rameh does not hold of Zika. This is a Stam Mishnah. We assume that anonymous Mishnah is Rameh. Actually, it actually brings that the uh, Mishnah is clearly Divir Rameh, right? So it's Rameh speaking. Vesakadaitach Sava Rameh ain't Zika. If you tell me that Rameh does not hold of Zika, right? That's what you, that's what you suggested before. We had a Kasha from a Mishnah. We said, oh, it's Rameh ain't Zika. If that's the case, what's wrong with Yibum in this scenario? Hani mitrei bati ka'asya. Look, Rachel is coming from Reuben's household. Leah is coming from another bais, from Shimon's household. Hai liyabim chada. Let Levi be miyabim Rachel. Vai liyabim chada. And Yehuda marry Leah. 
If we discount the Zika factor, awaiting Yibam does not is not considered being bound, being connected. It's not considered like an Arusa or Nasua. What's wrong with Bibi Yabim in this case? Not Levi Bibi Yabim Rachel. She's not the wife of his sister. Sorry, he's not, she's not the sister of his wife. He's not connected to Leah. It's just Zika. They're strangers. So let him take one and let him take one. Highly Yabim Chadim, highly Yabim Chadim. Leah means Zika, no. Even without Zika, we can understand the mission. The more figured what's preventing Yivam in this case is because of Zika. Right? As we explained, because when you have two Yivam, it's a way to Yivam. It's as though you're connected to both. And if they both happen to be sisters, then you're in trouble because either one is your sort of wife's sister. No, that's not the reason. There's no Zika. We discount that fact. We don't reckon with Zika. Why then, says our mayor, that Yivam is not applicable? We're concerned that it might bring about a cancellation of mitzvah sibum. Yibam is a mitzvah. You can't do anything that might carry the risk of being a vatal that potential mitzvah. What does this mean? The Dilma, we're concerned that if we allow Levi and Yudah to proceed and be miyabim, it might come to the point, it might, there's a chance, it might lead to bitl mitzvah. The Dilma, the Miyabim Chad, let's say, for instance, Levi is Miyabim, one of these Yivamis, Rachel. Okay, perfectly fine. At that point, maybe his brother Yehuda might pass away at that point. Before anybody took care of Leah. And once that happens, nobody can be Miyabim Leah. Levi can't. He's already married to Rachel. Leah is his wife's sister. The Kabatlas, Mitzvah Sivam, and this will bring about a bit of Mitzvah Sivam. One Yivam will be stranded without Yivam. That's a side point. Unrelated to Zika, there's another concern about doing something that might lead to bit of Mitzvah. Asks the Gemara, V'i ain't Zika, but if you tell me that Ramey does not hold up Zika, Ti Batal. What do we care if Mitzvah Sivam is Batal? The Gemara is understanding at this point the two things, Zika and bit of Mitzvah Sivam, goes hand in hand. You see, of being bound to Yibam is considered a connection. It's considered sort of an initiation of this process. The process has already begun. And to do something, to do anything that might usurp that, that might undo it, that might uproot it and cancel it is a problem. Because it's already here. You, you're being mavatal something outright. Something that's already here. But if you do not hold up Zika, awaiting Yibam is nothing more than just awaiting Yibam. The process has not yet begun. So then, it's not even here yet. And therefore you can allow yourself to do something that might end up in a roundabout way preventing the Yibam from unfolding. The two things go hand in hand. If you eat ain't Zika, if there's no concept of Zika, to then why are we concerned about being battled the mitzvah? The Rabbi Gamliel Amar ain't Zika. We find that Gamliel doesn't hold of Zika. Mutul levatel mitzvah sivam. And therefore, he says you can do bitul mitzvah. That's not. Rabbi Gamliel Aimer. So we're speaking where there are two brothers. Here comes another case. Two brothers, Reuben and Shimon, married to two sisters. Reuben is married to a gedola, an adult. Rachel is a gedola. Shimon is married to her younger sister Leah, who is still a ketana. Ketana, as we know, doesn't really have kedushin menat Torah. Sort of a semi condition with the Rabban, she can walk away, she can do meal. It's not a proper marriage. Reuben, who was married to Gdela, passed away. Shimon, the surviving brother, would like to do Yibam, but he's prevented from doing so because he happens to be married to Rachel, the Yibam's sister, but it's only a condition to Rabban. So, how do we deal? How do we treat this case? So, according to some Shittas, we encourage the Tana to walk away. And that uproots the Kedushan retroactively. So he was never married to Leah. And he can go and do Yibam to Rach. Ram Gamliel disagrees. He says, no. It's not our responsibility to accommodate uh, Mitzvah Yibam. Ram Gamliel, I mean, she decides to walk away, fine. But otherwise, we don't encourage it. 
Rather, how do we address this Yivam situation? Tamten Ashatagdal. So Rachel, the, the Yivama, Rachel, who was Reuben's wife, should wait around until Leah, her sister, grows up. She becomes a Gdala. And now Shimon the Yavim will marry her for real. With a condition, the Oiraisa. And now Rachel is Shimon's wife's sister, and she leaves the scene. She's part of from Yivam. Vetetze, hello Zoom, Shema Chaisisha. She leaves the scene because she's really a Chaisish. Clearly, Rabbi Gamliel is not concerned with negating mitzvah sivu. We can do uh, some sort of arrangement which will cancel, outright cancel mitzvah sivu. Why? Because as we know, based on a mission later, Rabbi Gamliel holds Ein Zika. So apparently, if there's Ein Zika, there's no concern with bitter mitzvah sivu. So why are you telling me that according to our mayor, on the one hand, Ein Zika, and then you tell me, well, he's concerned about bitter mitzvah? Hamalasi responded to him, What's the connection? The Ramam Lil Adra Mir Karam is asking from one sheet to the other? Maybe Ramam Lil is not concerned about Bitl Mitzvah. Ramir is concerned. It's not a raya. No, no, Hachi Kamrin, I meant to ask like this. Such a extreme like this. Is it probable that the uh, the Shitas are so extreme? Hachi Kamrin. Rabbi Meir Chayesh, I feel it was fake. On the one hand, you tell me, Rabbi Meir is concerned even about taking a risk, doing something that might bring about bit of mitzvah. In contrast to Rabbi Meir, that I feel it was Chayesh. He's not even concerned about outright bit of mitzvah, even letting her grow up and pushing away the other isha. It's hard to believe. It's improbable. <laughs> you have such a wide spectrum of shittas when it comes to the shayla of bitl mitzvah. One shita is concerned even about a slight risk. Don't even take a slight risk with those uh, four brothers there and don't do anything that might, even remotely, might taking a chance of <clears throat> of bitl mitzvah. Yom. And Gamaliel says, well, you could even do it outright. So the more, yeah, Dilma, perhaps, Madalei Chayish. The Shita who's not concerned, i.e. Ram Gamliel, even outright bittel is not a concern. Uman the Chayish, the one that is concerned, very mere, I feel it's fake a Even taking a remote chance poses a concern. So this is not really a kasha. So bottom line is, perhaps Rabbi Meir holds Ein Zika, and the Bryce there follows Rabbi Meir, but Rabbi Huda holds Yesh Zika in line with the other Tanoi. Only Abay the Rav Yosef. I want to tell you something interesting. Had Rav Yehuda. This statement presented by Rav Yehuda that Yivam Teisha Mesa Asr Beima because of Yesh Zika. The Rav Yehuda is the Shmuel. We know that Rav Yehuda learned by Rav and also by Shmuel. So actually, I can prove to you that this halacha is attributed to Shmuel and not to Rav. The Shmuel, the Snan, because we find elsewhere that a Shmuel holds of Ezek. Shemeres Yab, mission says, and Isha who is awaiting Yibam. Shekidesh Achibes Achoisa. Reuben passes away, leaves behind Rach. He has two surviving brothers, Shimon and Levi. Shimon decides, you know what, I'm going to be Mekadesh, Rachel's sister. Even before he got around to doing Yibam, I'm Mekadesh her sister. What do we do now? <laughs> so he was Makadish, the sister of Zivam. Mishum, Rabbi Yehuda ben Seir Ambo. The following was said in his name. That we have to wait. Ainulay, we tell Shimon, wait around. You can't marry. You Makadish, you have to stop and wait. Hampton, wait. Don't do Nisuin. Because really, you were Makadish, a sister of your Yivama, who is Zakuk to you. Who's bound to you, which we consider some like somewhat like like your wife. You can't marry the sister of your wife. So you have to wait. Achiyasa, Achichamas, until your brother Levi is Mayabim Rachel. Now she's no longer bound to you. She's no longer called your Zakuka, and then you're free to marry Rachel's sister. So this halach is based on the concept of Zika. What's preventing Shimon from proceeding? If I'm doing the Nasuin with Rachel, the Ivama's sister, 
It's because Rachel is bound to him. We treat it as though she's somewhat his wife, which doesn't allow him to marry his wife's sister. So he has to wait until that status is removed, until the, his brother Levi does the Yivam. V'amar Shmuel, halacha, could be the Messiah? Shmuel follows the Shita. Apparently, he supports the concept of Zika. So I have a right, the Rabbi Yehuda, who told us about Zika, who was really quoting Shmuel. Amar Lei, so Rabbi Yosef tells, how do you know? Did the Rav, my, what's the other alternative? That Rabbi Yehuda was quoting Rav? What's the problem with that? Amalei, he says, yeah, because Kasha the Rav the Rav. That would generate a contradiction between Rav Yudha, the name of Rav, Yeh and remember we had Rav Huna. Yeah, Rav Huna, Rav the Ezek. It be a steer between the two Ravs. So better that we attribute it to Shmuel than to Rav. Well, Dil Mamaroi, Ninu, Valibu the Rav. Maybe there are two versions of Rav. One version holds that Rav supports Zika. The other version holds that he negates it. So still, how do you know it's the name of Shmuel? Maybe they're both Rav, two versions of Rav. He answers, we prefer attributing it to Shmuel. That's a safe way. Once we have a direct quote from Shmuel, that Yesh Zika, but if we would have to attribute it to Rav, it would end up being a machlegas amaroyim of what Rav held. That's confusing. We don't let go of the direct quote of Shmuel. And then choose to attribute the halacha to, to Rav, which will end up being a Amaroyim, what Rav says. The smoother path is to say that if you is quoting Shmuel, who we know held of Zika, rather than saying he's following Rav, and then we run into Machlekes of what Rav said. I'm Rav Kahana. I'm Risa Lishmata. I related this halacha of Rav Yehuda, that he supports Zika. I presented it Kamei in front of Rav Zvid Minardo. Omar, he said like this, Atun, you, Hachi Mas Nisula. Your version was, Om Rav Yehuda, Yesh Zika, right? Then you have to go figure out whether it was the name of Rav, the name of Shmuel. By us it was clear that it was the name of Shmuel. Anan, Behed Yom Asnin Allah, Om Rav Yudam HaShmuel. Shemer Az Yom HaShemesa. And Isha, a wedding Yibam, who passes away. Also, the Yavam may not marry her mother, Alma, because he holds Yesh Zika. So by us it was clear that indeed the quote was attributed to Shmuel. V'az the Shmuel Tamei. Right? And if Kahana continues, and he says, in fact, Shmuel is in line with his personal shita. He reckons with Zika. Right? With Shmuel, the one that we had a minute ago with the mission of the Yerida uh, Mesera. The Amar Shmuel Halacha. We follow Rabbi Yudah that the brother has to wait until the Yibam happens. And that allows him to proceed with the Nisun because otherwise he's stuck in the middle because of the Zika concept. So basically we have two Halachis, in the name of Shmuel, both pretty much telling us the same thing. Both based on the concept of Zika. We have one halacha, Rabbi Yudam or Shmuel, or Shemir is Yavim who passes away. The Yavim may not marry her mother because of the Zika concept. It was as though he was married to her. One may not marry a relative of his wife. We have the other Shmuel who says we follow Rabbi Yudam and Maseira that if there were two surviving brothers and one proceeded to be Makadish, a sister of the Yivama, he can't do Nisun because it's a sister of the Yivama who's Zakak to him. As always, his, his wife's sister he has to wait until that status expires. So this too is based on Zik. Why do we need both Halachis in the name of Shmuel? Since they're both pretty much based on the same concept. But Tzrichi both are needed. The Yashmin and Yesh Zika. If only from that first Halach, I would say Hava Amina I would say, that only applies when there's one Yavam. He's the only potential Miyabim. So Zika is effective, because she's bound to him. So we treat her like she's connected to him. Avo but let's say there are two brothers here, in which case it's undesignated, undefined. We don't yet know who's going to be the Yavam. Perhaps Zika is not so potent, Kamashmon, that's why we need the other quote. 
In the case of Ravidu and Maser, we have two brothers and still we apply Zika. She's bound to both of them. Yashminan. If only from that one, Halacha Karudu and Maser, Havamina, perhaps I would say, Hanamil Mechaim. Zika only pertains during his lifetime. I think her lifetime. As long as the Ivam is around, Zika is applicable. Such as in the case of the Mishnah did. Avalacha Misa, but let's say she passes away. Perhaps it expires. Pakala zika. The zika concept is only in as much as she's awaiting yibum. She's not really his wife. She's just awaiting his yibum. Okay, during her lifetime. But after misa, the zika is over. It expires. It comes and goes. And therefore, he can marry her relative at this point. Kamash malan. That's why we have the first halach of our review of Rashmol. That yibum teshemei sa. Even after passing, he may not marry her relatives. Why? The zika bichdi loy pak. The concept of zika doesn't just expire bichdi on its own. Once connected, always connected. And therefore, he may not marry her relatives. It's the bottom line. We have Machlekes, Tanoim, Machlekes Amaroim. Whether we reckon with Zika concept, uh, what are the uh, manifestations of this uh, Zika concept? We have the case where she passes away. Can he marry a relative? We have a case where uh, two Yavamen, two brothers, one decided to be Mikadish, the sister of the Yavama. He cannot marry her until the uh, Yavama's status expires, until she's Siabim. And now he can proceed to marry her sister because otherwise he's married the sister of his Zakuka. We had a discussion about Bitu Mitzvah Yavama. Some are concerned, some are not concerned. Continues the mission. We're going to go back to the fundamental concept of Eishas Achiv Shloi which we discussed back in the first mission. Here we have another application, slightly different application to the same halach. Shnei Yachim, two brothers, Reuben and Shem. Umeis Echad Mehen. Reuben passes away. V'yibim Hasheni, as Eishas Achim. Shimon does Yibim to Rachel, Reuben's former wife. Right? So Reuben and Shimon saw each other. They were around the same time. After Reuben's passing, Shimon did Yibam. So now he acquired Rachel in addition to his, his first wife, Leah. So Shimon now has two wives. Leah, his original wife, and Rachel, the addition. And afterwards, after Yibam took place, another brother is born. Levi arrives on the scene. Levi and Reuben never saw each other. So Rachel, who was Reuben's wife, is technically, to, to Levi, she's an Eishas Achim, Shloi Hayyabay Lame. They never lived at the same time. So now Shimon passes away, leaving behind Rachel, the Isha that he used Miyavim, right? Reuben's former wife, and Leah, his, his, his own wife, Umes. What happens to those two Nash? Harishen, the first one, meaning Rachel, She's Potter. Potter from Yibam to Levi because Levi and Reuben never, never saw each other. Here's a Chiddush. Even though by the time Levi arrived on the scene, she was already married to Shimon, to Reuben, because once she's tagged as an Eishas Achav to Levi, it's, it's, a, it's a permanent a permanent uh, status doesn't expire. So she's part of from Yibim. Vashniya, the other Isha, Leah, Shimon's first wife, Mishum Tsarasa. She's also part of from Yibim to Levi because she's the fellow wife. She was in the same household as Rachel, who's an Erva to Levi. Also, by Mamar Mes. Let's say Shimon never really was Miyav in Rachel. He did some sort of slight process called Mamar which is a, a condition that are born on by Yavama. So now, now we have a dilemma. To Levi, Rachel is certainly off limits. What about Leah? Did Rachel really enter Shimon's household, in which case she would affect Leah, or does Leah remain unaffected because it was still pre yibum only Mamar? We can compromise, we do Chalitza without Yibam. Hashniya Chalitza, let me say this. So this is Shita's Chachamim. Shita's Tanakama. That, in any case, 
Rachel is Asra to Levi. Even though Shimon, at least in the first case, he was Miyabim. Miyabim Rachel. So even though he acquired Rachel, as far as Levi is concerned, she always remains Reuven's former wife, and him and Reuven have no relation. They never saw each other. Like, hey, you We went to the front of Pasuk. Yeshva Achim Yachtav. Even was not allowed in this case. So even after she was taken over by Shimon, it's a, it doesn't affect her status, Kalape, vis a vis, relative to Levi. Rabbi Shimon, Oymah, he disagrees. No! Once Rachel has been taken over by Shimon, she's now Shimon's wife. As far as Levi is concerned, he doesn't have to reckon with the fact that she was once Reuven's wife. And him and Reuven had no relationship. No, she's Shimon's wife. And him and Shimon, close brother, they saw each other around the same time. The Bible says, Reb Shimon? He's Miyabim. Reb Shimon, Aymar, Miyabim, Le'ezim, and Sheyirtze, Ay Chalitz, Le'ezim, and Sheyirtze. Levi is free to do Chalitz or Yibim to any of these Nashim. Rachel or Le'ezim. Amar of Aisha, Chalak Hayy Reb Shimon, Apparition. You meant to know that this dinner of Reb Shimon applies even in the first case, in the first mission. Even in that case, Levi is free to be Miyabim. So again, the first mission was speaking about a similar case, but with one detail changed. Reuben, Shimon, and Levi. Reuben was married to Rachel, passed away without children. Levi was born at that moment, before Shimon did anything. Levi arrives. So Levi and Reuben didn't see each other. Right? But now, Shimon was Meyabim Rachel. And Shimon passes away. Even in that case, Rabbi Shimon would hold, Rabbi Shimon would hold, that Levi can be Miyabim Rach. So even though when he arrived, when he was born, Rachel was still available for Yibam. She wasn't accounted for. She wasn't this Yabim by Shimon. Relevant. Doesn't matter. Because ultimately, when Shimon is Miyabim Rachel, he takes it over. She's not considered his wife. She related to him. She identifies with Shimon. She no longer identifies back with Ruth. As far as Levi's concerned, she's Shimon's wife. And him and Shimon, close brothers, they saw each other. Hayyab Ailami. This is Rabbi Ishi's Chiddush. But even in that first mission, when Levi arrived before Shimon was Miyabim, Cholok, Hayya Rabbi Shimon, Apri Shaina, in that case as well, Levi is free to be Miyabim, Rachel, after Shimon's passing. And certainly, in our mission, but there's a, uh, a mitigating fact. There's another mitigating factor. The fact is that Levi only arrived after Shimon was Miyabim. So he never even saw Rachel in, his, in, in that state. He never experienced Rachel before she was in Siabim to Shimon. As far as he's concerned, she was always married to Shimon. So just again, the first case, the first mission is speaking where Reuven passes away. Levi is born and then Shimon is Miyabim, Reuven's wife. And then he passes away. Even in that case, Rabbi Shimon would allow Levi to be Miyabim Rachel because she's now Shimon's wife. And certainly in the second case, in our mission, where Reuben passes away and Shimon does Yibam, and then Levi is born, and then Shimon passes away. Of course, Levi could be Miyabim Rachel, who was in Siyabim by Shimon because by the time he arrived, she was married to Shimon. As far as he's concerned, she's identified with Shimon, not with Reuben. Says, my husband, why should know that this is true? How does he know that even in the first Mishnah, which is a big Chiddush, even in the first Mishnah, when Reuben passes away, and then Shimon, Levi is born, and then Shimon is Miyabim, and then Shimon passes away, Levi can be Miyabim, Rachel, Esha, Shimon. Despite the fact that when he came, it was still before Shimon's taking over that Isha. I mean, my, how do we know this? But the Tani Mishnah is saved, because we really have an extra Mishnah here. Baba the racial Laman Ketani What's the point of that first Mishnah? What's the point? Everything has to have a meaning, has to have a Chiddush. Ilay Mele Rabbonon Is the Mishnah trying to point out Shittas Rabbonon that Levi may not be Miyab in this issue? Why do you need that first Mishnah? Which is less, than a, less of a Chiddush than the second Mishnah. Just say the second Mishnah, which is a greater Chiddush to Rabbonon. Hashto Yibim Basayif Noilat we have a second mission. 
where Shimon was Miyavet. And then Levi came around. Still the Rabbanon say, Levi may not marry Rachel Eishe Shimon. Why? Even though when Levi arrived, the Ashkecha, when he encountered her, when he saw Betera Ashkecha, she's already married to Shimon. Asi Rabbanon. Rabbanon still say it's Asa because the fact is she carries a load. She carries her history with her. Since she was formerly Reuben's wife, that makes her Asr on Levi. If in this case Rabbanon say Asr, certainly in the first Mishnah, where it was Noilat, Levi was born of Ha'achakach Yibim, and then Shimon was Miyabim. Miboya? Is there a need to tell me that according to Rabban, Levi cannot be Miyabim Rachel after Shimon's passing? Isn't that obvious? Once you know the second case, certainly the first case. Elo lav the Rab Shimon Oh, must be the first Mishnah's kind coming to highlight the Rab Shimon Shita. It's a chiddush in Rab Shimon that even in the first case, even in the first Mishnah, where Levi arrived prior to Shimon's being miyabim Rachel, but once Shimon is miyabim, she assumes a new identity, and Levi can ultimately be miyabim that isha after Shimon's passing. So that's a raya that Rab Shimon subscribes to his shita even in that first case. Otherwise, what's the point of the mission? We mentioned the first mission to highlight the Shimon's shita. It's much even in that case. We speak about the Seifa to highlight the Rabbanan shita. That even in the Seifa, which is a lighter version of, of the Eishah Sacha, Shalai Bailami, we're speaking that Shimon was already Miyabim. Rachel, Reuben's wife, and then Levi came onto the scene. Even in that case, Rachel is considered off limits to Levi. That's a chiddush, a chiddush that even did the Rabbanon say us. So this supports my my approach to Zerbeishu. That in both cases we have machlekes. So case one highlights Rabbi Shimon's heter, and case two highlights the Rabbanon's iser. Ubedinu the niflek Rabbi Shimon Beresh. Truth is, Rabbi Shimon should have just stated his opinion right in the. First case, if he was trying to disagree, Ella not to the Rabbana, but he waited with their heads until the Rabbana finished what they had to say. Adam Messiah, the Messiah, until they finished both cases. The other political lie, and then he came up with his with his objection. But really, really, he objects on both accounts. Ella is just Achim Shlaihei by Lama, the Rabb Shimon Echem Eshkachas, but keep in mind. This concept of Lo is based on a pasuk which we had yesterday. Yachtov. If you tell me the counter of Shimon, it's mutter in all cases. So when is it also? When do we find an application to the salach? Very posh And there are only two brothers. There are no three brothers. Bechad Acha. You have one brother, Reuven. Umeis. He passed away, leaving behind Rachel. And then Shimon is born. There's no reason to be matter here. <laughs> Nobody took her over. Inami, alternatively, betray. You have two surviving brothers. And Shimon never did a Yibam on Eishas He never died. Well, nothing happened. So Levi wants to be Miyabim that Isha. Rachel, who was Ruvain's wife. Ruvain, who he never saw. In this case, it's also Eishas Achav. Shalai Hoi Bailam. Says the Gmar Bishlaim, Yibim Achach Noilat. Let's go through both cases. So if Shimon did Yibam to Reuben's wife, and then Levi was born, I understand why she mutter to Levi. Why? Because he encountered her when she was already mutter. She was already Shimon's wife. We can ignore the fact that she was formerly Reuben's wife. Now she's Shimon's wife. And when Shimon passes away, I relate to her as Shimon's wife. And me and Shimon were good friends. But let's say Levi was born, and then Shimon was Meyabim, Rachel, Reuben's wife. My time, how can you allow Levi to be Miyabim? Rachel, after Shema's passing. He was born when she was still Reuven's widow. Rav Shimon holds. Oh, back to Zika. The fact that she's bound to Shema. It's not just a slight Shibud, slight connection. It's a very profound connection. It's as though she's Knusa, as though she's married to him. As soon as Reuben passes away, says Reb Shimon, um, as soon as Reuben passes away, yeah, says Reb Shimon that 
Rachel as though she was, we treat her as though she was married to Shimon, because the uh, Zika of Yibam, being bound Shibam to Shimon's uh, Yibam, makes her as though she's completely his wife. And now when Levi is born, even before Levi, Shimon was actually Miyabim her, if he was born at this moment, he can treat her as though she's Shimon's wife, and now he can ignore the fact that she was once Reuben's wife. Okay, let's just make a quick chazor. So the bottom line is, when do we apply the erva of Eshes Achav Shlei Beilam? Okay, so we have Reuben, who passed away. Shimon was Meyabim, Reuben's wife. Levi was a new brother born. So in a case where Reuben passed away, and then Levi was born, and then Shimon was Meyabim, Rachel, who was Reuben's wife. This is the case in the first Mishnah. Rabbana say, Levi can't be Miyabim because she was formerly Eshes Reuben. Rabbi Shimon says, no. Once Shimon marries her, he assumes the Isha, it becomes his wife. And Levi doesn't have to reckon with the fact that she was once married to Reuben. The same Achleikas applies in the second Mishnah. Reuben passes away first. Shimon was Miyabim. Rachel, Reuben's wife. Levi is born here as well. Rabbana say, well, Rachel is also to Levi because she was formerly married to Reuben, who was Lohei Bei Lomai. She can't shake off, shake off that identity. And she's also. Reb Shimon disagrees once again. He says, no. Even in this case, she's Mutter to Levi. Uh, certainly in this case, she's Mutter to Levi because, because uh, of the same reason. Because Shimon married Rachel, she's his wife, and Levi doesn't have to reckon with the fact that she was once married to, to Reuven. So the way the Gemara puts it right now is that in the first case, that um, in the second case where Levi was born after Shema was Miyabim, that's Pashat. It's easy to understand why she's mutter to Levi after Shema's passing, because he found her Beheta, he found her when she was really married to Shema. But in the first case, where Levi was born before Shimon was Miyabim, why would we say she's mutter to Levi after Shimon's death? When he arrived, she was still uh, Yavama. She was still Reuben's wife. Answer is Zika Kaknusa. We treat her as though she was Shimon's wife. We have one case where all agree that the Yavama is Asr. Reuben dies. And, and Levi was born. And there was no Yavam done. Shimon didn't do anything. Either there is no Shimon at all, right? Or Shimon is here and he, he was just idle, just passed, he didn't do anything. In this case, Rachel, Reuben's wife, is Asra and Levi. Of course, because she wasn't, uh, she didn't enter any other relationship, she wasn't taken over by any other brothers. So Levi identifies her as Eshes Reuben, Shlohei Belam, and she's Asra. Continues the Gemara. Mask of the Rav Yis. Have a kasha on what you told me. You tell me that according to Rabbi Shimon, Zika makes it as though she's married. Ha'ashto Zika umamar, masapka lil Rabbi Shimon. Even when there's a Zika and a mamar done by the brother. Rabbi Shimon is not sure what happens there. Masapka lil Rabbi Shimon. Iki knusa damya. Ilaki knusa damya. We're not sure whether we consider as though she's married to the Yavim or not. As we're going to see in the Mishnah soon. If that's the case, how can you suggest that Zika luchudem boye? Can you even tell me that just Zika alone, one element of connection is enough to make it Treat her like, like, he's, like she's his wife, which is the basis of Rav Shimon Shita. My, where do we find that Rav Shimon is unsure as to the effect of this combined Zika Mamar situation? This is not. Shloish Achen, we have three brothers in this case. Three brothers. Nisuin Shaloish Noshim Nachris. Three brothers married to three unrelated Noshim. Reuben married to Rachel. Shimon married to Leia, unrelated. And Levi married to Zilpa. Umei sechad mehem, Reuben passes away. Vasa basheni mamar. Shimon does mamar, that kedushim with the Rabban, on the Yivama, on the Anrach. Umei, and Shimon passes away. So he leaves behind his own wife, Leah, and also Rachel, who he did mamar to. So typically, when a person passes away, leaving behind two wives, he only meant to do Yivam one. Right? Not allowed to be on both. You meant to address the, the household, the family. Do Yibam one Yibam. But in this case, it's a little tricky because 
Shimon really only has one wife. He left behind Leah, but he did some sort of, he got entangled somewhat with Rachel as well. He did a mamar. So do we consider Rachel to have been married to Shimon, in which case he's leaving behind two wives, in which case you only do Yimam one, or no? Rachel wasn't really married to Shimon. She's still considered like Reuven's Yivam. So Rachel needs Yivam because she's Reuven's former wife, and Leah needs Yivam because she's Shimon's wife. How do we treat this? So he did mamar umes. Both require chalitz. We don't want to take chances. We're not sure how to view this. We do chalitz on both. Shenemar umes echad man. Yivam yevel leo. So one of the brothers passes away. Yivam applies, and we learn. It's a drasha the rabbanon hasmachta. Misha leo zikas yivam echad. You can only do yibum to an isha whose yibum is being triggered by the death of one man. As opposed to an isha whose yibum is triggered by two, passing of two men. Such as in this case, where, where um, Rachel sort of has two reasons for yibum. She's a little bit Ruben's wife, a little bit Shimon's wife. So you don't do Yibam here on this Isha. And you don't do Yibam on, on the other, on Leia as well, on Shimon's wife, because Rashi says once one is us, the other one is us. Maybe not. Saras, Arab is us. Okay, that's so good. In any case, that's a Tanakam. Rabbi Shimon, no, no problem. You can do Yibam. To either Rachel or Leah, pick a choice. And do Chalitza to the other one. Why? Explains the Gemara. Yibu mi tarvailo. You can't do Yibu on Rachel and Leah. The Dama Yesh Zika. Maybe the fact that she was bound to Shimon. This Zika connection is a true connection. So in effect we treat it as though Reuven married her. So now he has two wives. Rachel and Leah. Vahavu shtei yivamis. Habayis and bayis echad. It's as though we have Two Yivam is coming from one household. Look at Rashi on top. Bayis Echad. Rachmana Amar. Ez Bayis Echad. Yivam. Your brother's household. Bayis Echad. Anybody should they bottom. You take one Yivam. That's it. So you can only do Yivam one. Just in case they're both part of the same household. Yivam Echad says the Gemara. To do Yivam one. You have to either and exempt the other one completely. Loy. That's not a good. It's not a good option. Do Ma'en Zika. Perhaps Zika is not a valid element, and therefore. And therefore, we can't treat Rachel as though she was married to Shimon. Rather, she's just a Yevama that came from Ruben. So now when Levi is faced with these two Nashim, perhaps Rachel is coming from Ruben and Leah is coming from Shimon. So you can't just say, I'll take care of one, not the other. There's two separate reasons for Yivam. You have to address both. So apparently, Rabbi Shimon is not sure how to treat a, a Zika situation. Is it a connection or not a connection? It's pretty clear that Rabbi Shimon is not sure how to treat Zika. And here, remember, we're speaking Zika and Mahmer. Still, we're not sure whether she's considered connected to Shimon. So if that's a suffix, certainly if it's just Zika, one element alone, of course we're not sure. So how could Rabbi Shimon tell us in the mission? But the newcomer, Levi, has no concern with Eshe Zachar Shleibay Lamay. Even in the case where Reuven passed away, and Levi was born at that point, before Shimon did anything to Rachel, Reuven's wife. And then Shimon marries her. Shimon passes away. Levi can be beyond her. Even though when he arrived, it was still before Shimon did anything. Why? Because Zika Kuknusa, so she was married to Shimon, as far as I'm concerned, she's Shimon's wife. Shimon has, her Shimon has a suffix. It's not show sure whether we treat Zika Kuknusa or not. Okay, but as Hashem will continue, we'll pick it up tomorrow. It's so the bottom line. Is we got a Shaila. Do we reckon with Zika? Do we not reckon with Zika? Achlekes Tanoim Amiroim. We discussed Eishes Achav Shleiv Vehelo Veilamoi. All agree if these are just two brothers. Reuben passed away and Shimon arrives after his death. Of course, he can't be miabim that Isha. It's Lehei Veilamoi. That's posh. But if there's another brother involved who took over that marriage, who's miabim Rachel, Reuben's wife. Even in that case, Rabbana say that Isha was, is, and always will be to Levi and Isha's Achiv, she can't, she, can't, she can't shake off the fact that she was married to Reuven, who he never saw. 
Rabbi Shimon says no. Once Shimon takes over that marriage, she's Shimon's. She identifies with Shimon, and then when Shimon passes away, Levi can be behalf of her. As far as he's concerned, Shimon's wife. Me and Shimon, good friends. And therefore, Yibum is in place. All the best to you and Hatzlacha Rabba.